Arrhythmias mean loss of rhythm and is used to describe an abnormal rhythm of the heart. Cardiac arrhythmias are accelerated, slowed, or irregular heart rates caused by abnormalities in the electrical impulses of the myocardium. The heart is made up of four chambers, the right and left atrium and the left and right ventricles. Contraction of the ventricles ejects blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. And all this is possible because of the amazing coordination of the heart's conduction system, which is responsible for the creation and propagation of an impulse to the atrial and ventricular myocardium. The sinoatrial node is a dominant pacemaker and initiates an impulse and causes contraction of the atrial myocardium. As the atrium is depolarized, a P wave is transcribed on the surface ECG. After atrial contraction, the impulse reaches the AV node, or the atrioventricular node. This structure generates a slow action potential, and so there is a slight delay through the structure. Once the action potential transverses the AV node, it activates the promyl portion of the bundle of His, a specialized conducting tissue that generates a fast action potential. The period of time from the end of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS is termed the PR interval and is where the activation of both the AV node and bundle of His occurs. Abnormalities of conduction in the AV node and bundle of His are manifested on ECG as first, second, or third degree heart blocks. After impulse transmission through the bundle of His, the impulse is conducted to the right and left bundle branches, which generates fast action potentials. The impulse travels from the bundles, fascicles, and Purkinje network generating a fast action potential and resulting in rapid activation and depolarization of the left and right ventricular myocardium. The depolarization and contraction of the ventricular myocardium is represented by the QRS complex on the ECG. The contraction of the myocardium will eject blood out of the ventricles into the aorta and pulmonary circulation. Following the QRS complex, the T wave represents ventricular repolarization, which is a time when the ventricular myocardial, uh, myocardium relaxes. Atrial repolarization, the relaxing of the atrial myocardium, is hidden within the dominant QRS complex on the ECG. The sinoatrial node sets the normal heart rate at about 60 to 100 beats per minute. Bradyarrhythmias is a resting heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Tachyarrhythmias are essentially abnormal heart rates greater than 100 beats per minute. The main mechanism of bradycardia can be broadly divided into two groups. First is reduced automaticity. Reduced automaticity is the reduced automatic firing of the SA node, and this is usually due to an increase in vagal tone, increase in vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve is a long nerve from the brainstem that affects the heart rate. It essentially slows it down. Elite athletes have an increase in vagal tone and so has a low resting heart rate. When we sleep, our body naturally has a low heart rate too because of this mechanism. And of course, this is more of a bradycardia rather than a bradyarrhythmia. Regardless, certain diseases and medications can also either increase vagal tone, reducing the heart rate, but also can affect the sinoatrial or atrioventricular node, slowing the conduction down. The second mechanism of bradycardia or bradyarrhythmias is a conduction block. Conduction block is blockage anywhere along the conduction system of the heart. A good example is conduction block affecting the atrioventricular and bundle of His, which can affect the PR interval on the ECG. 
blockage of the AV node or the bundle of Hiss will cause a prolonged PR interval of some kind, which manifests as a heart block on ECG. However, you can get conduction blocks elsewhere in the heart. For example, ventricular conduction blocks, such as blockage of the right bundle branch, predominantly prolongs the QRS complex, but does not cause bradycardia. And this is because the action potential are still able to get to the other parts of the ventricle, and so doesn't really result in bradycardia. And the same case goes if the left bundle branch is blocked. Tachycardia is a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute, and people can be asymptomatic or experience palpitations, skipping beats, dizziness, chest discomfort, shortness of breath, and even presyncope and syncope. Tachyarrhythmias can be classified according to its mechanism. The first is enhanced automaticity. Normal increase in automaticity occurs when someone exercises or is anxious, and this causes a sympathetic stimulation to the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes, which will increase the heart rate. Abnormal increased automaticity occurs when there is ectopic firing of pacemaker cells elsewhere in the atrium or ventricles. For example, ectopic depolarization of atrial pacemaker cells will send impulses to the atrioventricular node rapidly, which is seen in atrial fibrillation, for example. Triggered activity is the second cause of tachyarrhythmias. Triggered activity occurs when abnormal action potentials are triggered by preceding action potential and can result in either atrial or ventricular tachycardia. Triggered activity can affect any part of the conduction system, but for simplicity, let's just say it's affecting the ventricular myocardium. The ventricular myocardial action potential looks something like this. In triggered activity, you get a trigger depolarization, usually occurring after in the later phase of the action potential. For example, the ventricular myocardium depolarizes, then slowly repolarizes. Early after it depolarizes, a triggered activity occurs, which can trigger an arrhythmia. This is termed early after depolarization because the triggered activity occurs early after depolarization of the myocardium. Another example is a triggered activity occurring when the action potential is nearly or fully repolarized. This is termed delayed after depolarization. The cause of triggered activity are things that usually prolong the repolarization phase of the heart muscles or the heart conduction system. And this can be drugs or certain diseases, for example. Reentry is the major cause of tachyarrhythmias and is our third mechanism of tachyarrhythmias. To understand what this means, let us look at uh, the atrioventricular node as an example. Anywhere along the tract, from the SA node to the ventricles, there can be heart fibers that are slow at sending the propagating impulse. The normal fast tract will send impulses and will continue down towards the bundle of Hiss, while the slow impulse catches up. Eventually, the fast tract will enter its resting period, the refractory period. The slow impulse will eventually continue and will be able to re-excite the fast track uh, fibers after its refractory period. And this will trigger a re-entry circuit that can be sustained, resulting in arrhythmia. The example we looked at involving the atrioventricular node is the cause of the classic supraventricular tachycardia. Another useful way to classify tachyarrhythmias is based on the location. 
supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmias. Supraventricular arrhythmias, as the name suggests, originate from the atrium and AV node above the ventricles and are characterized by normal appearing or narrow QRS complexes. Ventricular arrhythmias originate below the atrioventricular node on the ventricular level. Ventricular arrhythmias are characterized by abnormal appearing prolonged QRS complexes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, arrhythmia overview.